Good morning, Maths Week Scotland students. My name is Katrina Bray, and I have the utmost honour of introducing Elson to you today. He's got a really interesting uh, talk set up for you, Principle of Least Action. There will be opportunities to get involved and engaged, so keep an eye on the YouTube chat. I'll be popping links in there for you to go over to Desmos, which is an interactive maths platform. We hope you'll join us, input some answers, and enjoy the talk. Hello, hi, good morning. Um, welcome, and thanks for joining in. Um, my name is Elson Chung, so I'm a lecturer in applied mathematics at the Open University. So um, in this talk, I'm going to talk about principle of least action, or what is the quickest route to go from A to B. So um, let's, let's imagine that you are standing on a beach, like at this uh, over here. Let's suppose that you are standing at this position point A, and then you saw a beach ball on the other side on the, of the water, and then you want to find what is the quickest route to go from A to B. Remember that the half of this side is ground and half of the other side is seawater. So you have to run and also to swim in order to go from A to B. And you want to calculate what is the quickest route to go from A to B. So before we continue, I'm going to make some assumption. So let's assume that you can run faster on the ground, then you can swim on the water. So let's call this Firan the swimming, sorry, Firan is the running speed, the running speed you can run on the ground. And let's call free swim the swimming speed, which you can swim on the water. So mathematically, we write that the running speed is greater than the swimming speed. In other words, you can run faster on the ground than you can swim on the water. So these are the assumptions that we are going to make. And then um, using this assumption, you want to find the quickest route to go from A to B, bearing in mind that you have to run and also to swim in order to go from A to B. So now um, Katrina is going to put a link to Desmos on the live chat. So if you could um, go to this link and then try to sketch the quickest route to go from A to B. And, and then I will maybe give you one minute to do this and then I will come back to the slide. So um, so the yes, to repeat the problem again. So basically, if you could go to Desmos link here and then if you can try to sketch a, a route which you think is the quickest to go from A to B. So A is the starting point and B is the end point where you want to end up. So, so half, half of this is land and half of this is water. So you have to run and you have to swim in order to go from A to B. So perhaps can you uh, sketch what is the quickest route to go from A to B? So um, I will give you um, one minute to do this. So the link is on the live chat. So if you can just click the link, I don't know where the live chat is. Um, yes, I I saw some someone um, sketching. Thank you, thank you very much. If you have done the sketch on Desmos, so um, please. Uh, okay, I saw another sketch. Thank you. Um, remember, you can run faster on the ground 
but in this in the water you can swim but it's slower so um how do you go from a to b the quickest way to go from a to b is it a straight line like this um so is it a straight line or is it uh something else So thanks everyone who who has done who has participated. Maybe I will wait a couple more seconds just to let more people to draw. Um, So how, how is the live chat, Katrina? Is there any? Yeah, the live chat mm -hmm. is a bit quiet, but like I said, not all schools, um, yeah. you know, will we'll engage in chat for safeguarding reasons. Yes, that's, that's but right. how but many? I, I, I saw. I think there are quite a few on Desmos actually. So that's Fabulous. that's very that's very that's very good. Thank you. Um, so okay. I, I will bring over the Desmos. So this is what you have sketched on Desmos. So thanks, um, thanks everyone for participating. By the way, the names have been uh, changed. So these are not real name. This is just the name of uh, some mathematician. Um, okay, some someone drew a straight line. Okay, someone drew a straight line. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, this, so uh, there is, okay, um, how do I go here? Let's go here. So this person drew a straight line. So, so basically this, this, basically you run from here to here and then you swim across vertically. So you run from here to here and then you swim across vertically. So I think, so, um, and then there is also someone who drew a uh, straight line. So, yeah, so this straight line. So basically you just run from here to here and then you swim for the rest of the course. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so I think we have two majorities. Okay, this is interesting. So you you run across horizontally and then you run again vertically and then you swim for the rest of the course. So, okay, there are a few answers. I think most, the majority is a straight line to go from A to B and some chose to go this and then this. So um so for people who for people who drew a, a straight line maybe you can type on the live chat why you think straight line is the quickest route and then for people who drew this maybe they can also type on the live chat why they think that this is the quickest route so what is the logic for choosing this versus this while Elson, um, yeah. I asked the question in the chat on YouTube and Elliot has said, you want to spend the least possible time in water because slower speed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, Louise has said something similar. You want to stay on the sand as you can be a bit faster. Once you get into the water, you have a lot more resistance. Yeah. Um. Yes. Um, thank you for thank you for the answer. That's 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 brilliant. Yes, that's. Uh, I think I think you capture the the logic. Um, basically, you want you want to minimize the swimming distance because you are slower in water, 
but uh at the, by the same time you 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 also you 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 so you want to minimize the swimming distance because you are slower in water but at the expense of that you have a bit longer running distance so there is um so there is like a balance between the the two so okay let's go back to the presentation thank you for participating um so let's try to sketch the quickest route um uh, okay you have answered this question already so is the straight line the quickest route i think uh elliot and the other person said no because so you already answered this so straight line is not actually the quickest route to go from a to b so the reason is basically for the same amount of time you can cover longer distance on the ground than on the water because you can run faster on the ground than you can swim in the water so the so the quickest route is actually somewhere between the red and the green so the quickest route is actually in between these two extreme so you have one extreme which is the red and then another extreme which is the green so basically the green route you have the shortest swimming distance but the longest running distance so this might not be the optimum time but uh, you might so the optimal time is actually somewhere in between the red and the green so for example this the the black so the black uh, route is an approximation of the optimal path to go from a to b so you have a little bit longer running distance and a little bit shorter swimming distance so this is a compensate between the two um so the next question is how do we actually so this is an approximate answer so again um there is no right or wrong answer because the actually the the correct answer depends on how fast actually you run on the land and how fast you actually run on swim so the correct answer actually depends on the number depends on the actual swimming speed and on the actual running speed so the basically the correct answer is somewhere in between the red and the green so how do we calculate the optimal path precisely so how do we find the most optimal route to go from a to b so to do this let's define an angle theta so let's call this the turning angle basically this a this is like how much you have to turn when you when you reach the shore of the sea so let's call this angle theta let's call this the turning angle basically when basically you run from a to c and then you turn by this angle theta and then you swim for the rest of the race so let's define this angle theta so this angle basically can vary this angle can vary from 0 to 90 degree as you can see in this animation this angle so basically the, 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 the so for each turning angle zero you for each turning angle theta you have the corresponding root acb so for example for angle zero the corresponding root is this for angle turning angle theta equal 15 degree the corresponding root is something like this and then for 45 degree is actually a straight line and and so on so you have so the angle theta vary from zero to 90 degree so basically what what can you notice about the point c when the angle theta is 90 degree maybe i can play the in animation again so basically we define an angle theta the turning angle theta which is the how much you have to turn once you reach the shore 
this angle can vary from zero to 90 degree. So what did you notice about point C when the angle theta is equal 90 degree? So please uh, type on the live chat. Maybe I can play the animation again. Um, so you have this angle theta. So basically the idea is you want to find the optimum angle theta such that the root ACB is the shortest time. And the angle theta can vary from zero to 90 degree. And C is this point. C is the point where you have to cross from running to swimming. So what happened to this point C when the angle theta goes to 90 degree? Maybe if you have any idea, feel free to type on the live chat and then. Well, I'll send, yes. it is right on top of it. Yeah. It says the angle would be negative than if water speed is faster than the ground speed. The angle will be negative. Negative. Oh, right. Okay. If the water speed is fast. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Um, you are right. Yes. Uh, well, is it right? Um, let me think about it. Um, what do you mean by the angle is negative? So if the angle is negative, uh, <laughs> this angle is defined to be the angle between the line AC and the vertical line. So this That's turning- Elliot angle. now says, wait, that doesn't make okay. sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I think if the angle is negative, basically you are going this, this way and then it goes this way. So you are going this way and then it goes this way. Um, So the, uh, yeah, maybe I can repeat the question, basically what happened to this point C. So the point C is basically when you cross from running to swimming, when the angle goes to 90 degree. So this angle is 85 degrees. So it's not rich, it's not yet 90 degree. To go to 90 degree, basically you have to go further to the right. So, and can someone guess what happened to this point C? Well, it it seems to me, and I'm not a mathematician, so yeah, um, that when the angle goes to 90 degrees, it's actually taking you the longest way around, and it would take yeah. longer than yeah. 85 or less degrees. Yes, yeah, thank you, uh, Katrina. Yeah, thank you. That's correct. So basically the point C is going to infinity when the angle theta is 90 degrees. Um, so yes, again, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to put on the live chat. Um, so, the, so the goal of this exercise is basically to find a special angle theta such that the root ACB is the shortest time. So basically the goal of our exercise is to find an angle theta such that the root AC, which is the running segment of the course, and then CB, which is the swimming segment of this course, is the shortest time. So how do we find the special angle theta? So, um, so let's do an experiment. So let's do an experiment. So let's say that we hire a professional athlete to run along each of this route. So let's 
let's we let's assume that we we hire a professional athlete, and then we ask her to run along this route, and then repeat, and then of course we let her rest for a while and recover, and then <laughs> tell her to run again along to, uh, to to do this course, and then repeat, and then again try to do run along this course and so on. So. And then we can measure the time. Uh, can measure the time. Um, was, uh, okay, apologies. I think this 45 and 15 are swapped. This is the 15 should be here and the 45 should be here. So basically, we, we ask an athlete to run along each of these course, and then we measure the time. For example, for the angle theta equals zero degree, the time it takes for the athlete to complete the race is five minutes. And for angle theta, yes, yeah, sorry, this image are wrong. It should be swapped. For the angle theta equal 15 degree, and the time it takes for the athlete to complete this race is 3.5 minutes, for example. And then for angle theta equal 45 degree, the time it takes for the athlete to complete the race is two minutes. For 70 degree is 1.8 minutes. And then we can put these measurements on the table like this. So on this column, we have the angle theta in degrees. And then on this column, we have the total time in minutes. So for angle zero degree, the total time to complete the race is five minutes. For angle 15 degree, the total time is 3.5 minutes for 5.45 is two minutes for 70 is 1.8 minutes. And then we can try to plot this on a graph. So this is a graph of time versus theta. So the y-axis is the total time to finish the course T and the x-axis is the turning angle theta. So basically, uh, this point correspond to zero degree five minutes, and this point basically correspond to fifteen degree and three point five minutes, and this point correspond to forty five degree and two minutes. This point correspond to this uh, data, and then uh, of course we can repeat the experiment, and then we can repeat the measurement to have a lot more points like this. So you have a lot more data on the graph. So we ask the athlete to, to, to rest, recover, and then do the race all over again with different angle theta. And then we can plot the graph of the total time that the athlete took to finish the course against the turning angle theta. Finally, we can join these points to get a curve. So this curve, so we call this curve T as a function of theta. So this curve is sometimes written like this. So basically this is the total time T as a function of turning angle theta. So what did you notice about this curve, the time, T as a function of theta. So what did you notice about this curve? Maybe again, feel free to use the live chat and uh, you can type anything. Uh, well, while they're working on um, the answer to your question, there has been a bit of talk about needing to stop and think as your intuition would tell you, I see the object right there in front of me, go straight for it. Yeah. So this is making you sort of stop and think about yeah. some of the things you've, you've brought up so far. That's, that's interesting. Yes, thank you for uh, bringing this up. Actually, there is another experiment which I will tell you later. So you will be surprised about what I'm going <laughs> Oh, I'm looking to forward to it. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So Elliot has said it has a minimal time around 65 degrees. Yeah, that's right. Um, 
That's right. Thank you. That's correct. So there is a minimum time around the angle theta, maybe, I don't know, maybe 65. Yeah, around 60, 65. So this is the angle that we want to find. So this is the optimal angle that we want to find. So thank you very much, Elliot, for spotting this. So what? yes, um, basically, as you can see from this curve, the time initially decreases smaller time basic smaller time t basically means that it's faster to complete the race so as you can see from the curve initially the time decreases and then increase again so it, the time goes down and then goes up so then at some point there is a time here which is a minimum around 65 degree um okay well done <laughs> um so so the question is how do we find this minimum um so this is where we use mathematics so the mathematics of calculus um yes uh um you will learn this in a level maths basically uh so the mathematics calculus will allow us to calculate the slope at any point along the curve for example at this specific point the slope is negative negative slope means that the time is decreasing as the angle theta is increasing and then at this specific point the time the slope is positive so a positive slope means that the time is increasing as the angle theta is increasing so we can use this fact to find the minimum time because at precisely the minimum time the slope is actually zero so let's call this angle theta one which is around 65 degrees something d is the special angle which correspond to the minimum time or the quickest time to finish the the race so the minimum time theta one is basically corresponding to the quickest route by the person to run and swim to get to point b so um you don't have to by the way you don't have to remember this formula but uh, using mathematics basically you can calculate what this angle theta one is so basically the angle theta one is given by this formula one over v run sine theta one is equal to one over v swim sine theta two so theta one is this angle theta two is the angle on the other side um v run is the swimming speed and v swim is the swimming speed so v run is always larger than v swim you always run faster on the ground than you can swim in the water so basically when you are on the beach and you saw something <laughs> on on the water and you want to go get it as fast as possible how do you get there basically you can use this formula <laughs> you can calculate what how much is you have to turn at the shore and then you go from here a to c and then using this formula you calculate how much you have to turn and then go and then go swim from c to b that will guarantee so this formula will guarantee you to get you from a to b the quickest time um okay so there was yes there was a related question about intuition so intuition so our intuition as human basically tells us to you know just run straight towards the target right um so there is a mathematics professor in michigan who did this experiment with human participants so you have some uh, human participants so they all start from the same point they all start from the same starting point a so basically the professor tell them that try to go to b as fast as possible so just so in this experiment with human participants so they are they were told to go to b as fast as possible 
So as you as, as you expect, most people will just run straight towards the target, right? That's what human intuition thing told, told us, which is actually not the most optimal route, as we as mathematics have shown us that this is actually not this is not the most optimal route. This is not the shortest time to go from A to B. And then the the mathematics professor did the, the same experiment again, but this time with dogs. So they have different breeds of dogs, uh, small dogs, big dogs. <laughs> basically, what they found is basically all dogs, somehow they, they follow the most optimal path to go from A to B. So the dog somehow can... Uh, use this formula one over v run sin theta one equal one over v swim sin theta two to calculate how much they have to run and then how much they have to swim. So somehow the dog, this mathematics of calculus somehow is already built in in the in the in the intuition of in dogs intuition, but not in humans. Um, Oh yes, so the, if you want to know more about this experiment, there is an article on the internet by this uh, mathematics professor Pennings with the title, Do Dogs No Calculus? So Alison, just before yes. we move on, uh, is this Lake Michigan you're talking about? Yeah. Well, I'm from Wisconsin, which borders like... Oh. And so thank you so much for thinking of me. Um, and uh, some of the other comments follow um, that we knew dogs were smart. Someone says they bet the, the Dachshunds went the opposite direction and got lost. Um, and yeah, people seem to be really enjoying this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you for Yes, if, if if you have dogs, I think you 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 will understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, how much time do we have? Oh, right. Okay. Is is I think uh, I think there's only one or two slides more. Um, how many of you have heard about refraction of light? Uh, well, if you if you, you if you don't know what refraction of light is, you can just do this experiment at home. Try to put a pencil inside a glass of water, and you can see that the, the pencil appears to be bent. It doesn't look straight; it appears to be bent. So, why is this? Why is this the case? So, the reason is basically light, light as we know it, light from the sun. Basically, light ray bends as it passes through the medium. So the light ray basically bends as it passes from air to water. So this is called refraction of light. So why? So what is the reason that the light bends? Basically, light travels faster in the air than in water. So light actually travels slower in water than in the air. So actually, the, the law of refraction is actually given by the same formula. 1 over V air. So V air is the speed of light in the air. Sin theta 1 is equal to 1 over V water. V water is speed of light in the water. Sin theta 2. Um, and the speed of light in the air, V air, is always larger than the speed of light in water. So this means that light actually follows a path which takes the shortest time. So it's similar to what we had before. This is called the principle of least action. Actually, uh, if you learn physics at the university level, you, can, you, you will learn that actually many laws of physics actually follow the same principle of least action like this. So, okay, thank you very much for... <laughs> participating in the live chat and also in Desmos. So if you have any comments, or any feedback or anything, feel free to type it on the live chat. So there have been a few more comments about dogs or rather animals in general, yeah. and that they're a lot more attuned 
to finding that fastest mm. because they need to hunt prey and things like mm. that. So it's more instinctual for them yeah. to, to do that versus a yeah. human who yeah. would more likely just do a straight line. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and we have been asked, where else does this principle of least action apply? Um, I don't know if you have learned something about Newton's second law, Newton's law. So, um, yeah, so basically Newton's second law is basically says like the force is equal to mass times acceleration. So basically this, basically Newton's second law can be derived from something called the principle of least action. Basically when you throw, when you throw something like a basketball, the projectile of this basketball basically follows a path such that a quantity, so this quantity is called the action, is similar to time, but it's not time, it's called action. So there is a quantity action. So basically when you throw a basketball, the projectile of this basketball follows a path such that the action is the minimum. And the mathematics to calculate this uh, trajectory is basically the same as what we have done in this uh, talk. There have um, been a few suggestions from the audience as well as to where this principle can apply. Yeah. Um, Paul has said mechanics or conservation of energy. Yeah. Uh, lightning was an example and electricity. Yeah. Um, and Paul says Landau's physics books seem to reduce all of physics to the principle of least action. Uh, thank, thank, thank you very much, Paul, for the very advanced <laughs> answer. Uh, you are actually quite uh, well ahead <laughs> than me. Uh, you, um, you are right. So basically, in 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 uh, again, I'm not uh, you know like 100 expert on this, but uh, what uh, <laughs> I've learned from physicists is basically. In, in most of modern physics, including quantum mechanics and, mechan and, and electromagnetism and gravitational field, basically you can write down an action. So there is a quantity and we just call the action. And basically the path of the particle or the electromagnetic field, whatever. So the path of an electron, for example, or the trajectory of a basketball or the electromagnetic wave basically follows the principle such that the action is always the minimum. Right. Um, and Paul offers us one last example. Soap bubbles are great to reveal solutions of least energy. <laughs> Thank you very much Paul, for giving that example. Yes, thank you. That's that's very good example. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well, we're just about out of time and we don't have any uh further questions in the chat. So, Alison, I will say thank you for such a fascinating session. Um I learned quite a bit today. Um we're taking my dog to the beach in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to put her on the water and see what she does. Yeah. Um, and I will report back. Yeah. And then to everyone watching us on YouTube through Math Week Scotland, thank you so much. We hope you found this educational. And don't forget, we've got one more event tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., same channel. Thank you so much, everybody.